I'm Kristen Bersnowski, the executive editor of TV Drama, and I have the pleasure of speaking with Juan Jose Campinella, who works across film, television, theater, as a director, screenwriter, producer, and editor. What does the overall deal with Viz mean for you? What's the support it provides? It was great. You know, we are really having a great relationship. We, we, we get along beautifully, uh, creatively. The, the work on, on the Los Enviados, the Envoys, the first season was our first, you know, our, the, was the first show that we actually did, we actually made, you know, we, we talked about, we developed other stuff, but, uh, and it was wonderful. It was wonderful. It was a very respectful. Uh, the creative teams is great. The leadership by JC Acosta is, it's really, he's a, he's a, he's a, a very sweet kind of leader, you know, uh, <laughs> He, uh, you really want to work, wanting to do good for him. And, uh, and it's really great. Same with Federico Cuervo, you know, which is the, the, the I don't know the exact title, but it's, he's the head of, the, of our uh, territory. And, um, and, it, and, it, and with the whole team, you know, it's, it's been really great. I think that the envoys was very rich. Sometimes, you know, the, the, the cliche is that the, the, cre the creators and the network, you know, are always button heads. And, and, and it was not, the, it was not the, the case here. It was really very fruitful and hopefully it will be like that. Now, as, as to what it means to me, it, I mean, having a home, you know, it's very hard for me to go around pitching projects uh, and stuff like that. I don't like it. I hate that part of the process. And having people that are friends that I'm saying, look, I have this idea. Uh, what do you think about this? And we talk about it over a cup of coffee and not an official pitch, you know, which it's so nerve wracking. It's, it's wonderful for me. It's really wonderful. It makes a huge difference. <laughs> what are the types of stories or projects that you'd like to undertake with this Viz support? I always tend, you know, I like many things. As a filmmaker, I like many things. I like many genres, uh, but there's always in, in the stuff that we do, there's always the, the presence, even in a, in a, even in a show like uh, Los Enviados, like The Envoys, which is a sort of mystical thriller, you could call it. We, have, we try to have a lot of, or, or we don't try to have, it just comes out naturally, a lot of humor and, and humanity. There are always a lot of human stories. So the genre, we use a genre, when we do genre, we do we, like the secret in, like my movie, The Secret in the Rice, you know, it's a, the, the genre is what gives you the motor, the story, you know, the, the urgency, the sense of urgency that you want to keep watching and the conflict and, and the cliffhangers and all that. But, it's the container of a lot of human characters and human of human emotions. We never really let the the genre over overtake the the human drama in the series, and that's basically a constant. Let's talk about the envoys. What was the genesis of that series? It was in 2015. Look how how long things take. On 2016, you know, we finished doing a a, a show for Telefe, which was which is a the the TV channel that that uh, Viz owns here in Argentina, and uh, you know we had a very good relationship. We wanted to move forward, and Emmanuel Diaz, one of the you know one of the, one of the writers, created this idea. It's it's his idea. He presented it to us. We developed it in house over a couple of years, and uh, in 2017 or 2000, yes. I, Maybe the same thing happens to you that because of this called pandemic and quarantine, years get blurred in your mind. Okay, <laughs> you know, 17 or 18, we actually brought it to, to, to this. And, uh, you know, after the whole process, the usual process of, uh, of uh, the path to green light, it actually happened and quarantine happened, you know, and all those things got delayed for a year and all that. And so, so finally we did it. Uh, it was uh, it was great or to me, I was always looking precisely because of what you asked me before, you know, that whole internationality of television today. It used to be that I only thought in Argentine terms. Now we think of a broader canvas, the, uh, the territory, the whole, you know, um, which I always think, you know, that um, paraphrasing Bernard Shaw with when he was referring to Britain and America. Uh, I would say that all the Spanish speaking countries, we are, uh, we are countries separated by the same language, you know, so we have different accents and different words. So it's very difficult to find something that organically will be 
you know, for people, you know, with actors from different countries and, and it doesn't feel like one of those old movies from the 70s, you know, when they when they had actors from all over the world and no one spoke the same language and it was that. So, so this is great. The first season was in Mexico, in a little town in Mexico. I like to explore little towns and the folklore of the towns of, of the cities, their mystics, their, their legends and all that. And the second season will be in Spain, in a small town in Spain, in Galicia, uh, where the, our heroes, uh, you know, go to to find uh, the truth behind another supposed miracle. It had the strongest acquisition and streaming performance across all original international titles to debut on Paramount Plus US. What does that say to you about what audiences are looking for? It has always been a problem for me uh, to, and I try not to think about a target. You know, um, I don't, um, I think that when you when you start doing something for a target, um, it's not uh, it's not um, what what you do. It doesn't come from inside, you know. And you're sort of playing it by ear, th doing what you what you suppose that someone else will like, and many many times that leads to failure. So I would say that always everything I do, the target is me. So the target is an Argentine guy, sixty two years old, uh, who has lost his hair. That's 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 to me the target of the show, <laughs> you know. So so I like I I think that the attraction of it is great performances. The actors are phenomenal. Uh, a storyline, you know, that that is a, that is well dosified with with suspense and, and cliffhanger. It's sort of it, it it's original because it's not a horror movie. There are no ghosts or stuff. It 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 plays in that gray area of the mind that that uh, uh parapsy para psychology. Uh, but it also has that that distinctive element of humor, and and uh, the the two guys are very funny, and and uh, and and humanity. So it's 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 strange to find that mix. You mentioned shooting in Spain. What else can you tell us that's in store for season two? Just broadly, in terms of themes you'd like to explore, characters that deserve digging in a little bit deeper. Yes. Okay. Well, yes, we are, we are going to, you know, the, the character of the nun, Emilia, it now has a bigger, you know, has a bigger role, uh, thanks, to, thanks to the things that she did in the first season. And, uh, and she will be almost like a third, a third uh, person in the team. Uh, and the, the case, they go to a small town in Spain because a friend, you know, they actually, the, the priest who, who uh, protected, um, one of our, of our of our leads when he was a teenager and he was in trouble, you know, and he, and he it, it's more of a favor. It's more of a personal favor to him. And the element that we're adding to it, it's the the whodunit, an Agatha Christie kind of thing that I'm very very fan, uh, a huge fan of, and uh, and it's going to have that element too. So added to the whole to the whole thing. 